Lead stiffenate is a primer explosive most commonly used in bullet primers. It's a sort of stiffening acid which it itself is a high explosive. Lead stiffenate can be made from stiffening acid and that's the first step of the preparation. To make the stiffening acid you'll need 9 grams of resorcinol, 50 ml of sulfuric acid, which depending on where you live can be pretty hard to get, and finally some concentrated nitric acid. I've used 30 ml but you can use like 15. Also, before I get demonetized, this video has been done for educational purposes only, and anything you do is on your own responsibility. First, to make the acid, we have to nitrate the resorcinol. However, sadly, we can't just throw it into the nitration bath, because there will be a bunch of organic junk produced in the process. So, to avoid the tar formation, I'm first going to sulfonate it in 50 ml of sulfuric acid. Also, I'm not sure if I'm the only one, but the color of the solution is actually really nice. Basically, the sulfonation will reduce the possible side reactions to the point where the only viable one is the product. Also, we need the sulfate group at a very specific position, so the sulfonation has to be done at 100C. With that said, I've left it to react for like 45 minutes, in which I've played some Fortnite. Also, for some reason, I've lost all of my magnetic stirrers, so I've had to use this comically undersized one. The funny thing is that I've lost that one too later. <laughs> the solution goes through a bunch of color changes and in the end it should have a color very close to lilac. After that I've taken it off the heat and now it's time to start the nitration process. Basically I add the nitric acid into the sulfuric acid slash resorcinol solution and that will create a nitration buff. Okay, so I've put it in the nice buff, then I've waited for it to cool down to 0C. Anyway, I've added all 30 minutes of the nitric acid at once. and after stirring it, a giant cloud of nitrogen dioxide started spewing out of the beaker. I think that's the nitric acid decomposing, however, I can't say for sure. Basically, during this process, the nitric acid is attacking the resorcinol sulfate and adding nitronium ions onto the molecule. However, just like before, we need the nitronium ions to be in a very specific place, and to complete the reaction, we'll have to hit it later. For now, the solution is filled with mono and dinitro resorcinols, however, we need the trinitro form. And to do that, I've put it on a hot plate. Now the target temperature is 120C and I've left it again for 30 minutes. During the process, once again, the solution's color changes quite a few times and starts to foam. This foam is most likely the stiffening acid precipitating out and it sometimes has to be broken up. However, I'm not very sure why, but nitrogen dioxide seems to appear during this reaction and I think it could be from the lower forms of nitrosorcinol reacting with each other to form the trinitro form. The solution has a really beautiful red color, which means that we've got the good stuff. After the 30 minutes have passed, it's time to precipitate out the stephanic acid. Stephanic acid isn't very soluble in water, so we have to add some to crush it out. When the water was added, for some reason a bunch of nitrogen dioxide crushed out. This can be avoided if you let it cool to room temperature. Okay, so the yellow stuff is the crude stephanic acid, and if you need the pure stuff, then you can purify it by crystallization. However, I don't really need a really pure product for the next reaction. So finally, for the last step of the preparation, all you need is the stephanic acid, a magnesium alkali, and finally a soluble that's salt. First to a bunch of water I have added some stephanic acid. Stephanic acid can't really react with lead nitrate itself. We first have to turn it into magnesium stiffenate for some reason. Because every magnesium alkali isn't very soluble, I've decided to go with magnesium hydroxide. Because it's not soluble in water, I have to stir it really well so that the stephanic acid touches the magnesium hydroxide particles. Anyway, meanwhile it's stirring, I've prepared the lead nitrate solution. Okay, now that the hydroxide settled, the solution looks way darker and that's a good sign. Anyway, I've combined the two solutions and after a while a precipitate forms. What's going on here is a double displacement reaction between magnesium stiffenate and lead nitrate. If you don't have lead nitrate on standby, you can use an another soluble lead salt like lead acetate. Also, I don't think I've mentioned it, but the magnesium stiffenate way of making lead stiffenate has been stolen by me from rest in peace, Explosiopedia. Okay, back to lead stiffenate. Because lead stiffenate ain't that soluble in water, it starts to crash out as these really small lead stiffenate crystals. I'm not sure if you can see it on the video, but there's actually a bunch of lead stiffenate precipitating, but it does in the end settle and you can kind of see a small layer of the explosive at the bottom. And that's ladies and gentlemen our explosive. After the explosive is crystallized, I've waited for it to settle, poured off the liquid, filtered it, dried it and now it's time to have some fun.
Also, during the whole time I've had noise cancelling headphones, so that I don't hurt my hearing. Anyway, after committing genocide on the aluminum foil population, I've had a bunch of lead stiffnate left over. So there are two ways of destroying this, one is some reagent called Phantom's reagent which needs concentrated hydrogen peroxide which I currently didn't have and the other one is Spirana solution which I went with. When it comes to stiffnic acid I've obviously didn't use all of it so, so I've stored it in one of my jars. Okay, so that's all folks, if you liked the video make sure to subscribe.